eclipses are dramatic wild cards of our horoscope the universe uses eclipses as a tools to get us moving some of our lives became stagnant and there is high time to change we are very reluctant to change we don't even think about needing that that there's going to be a great need for change eclipses they come around they approach us they surprise us they have this element of i never seen that coming not in a hundred million years and they get us moving hello hello astrology lovers and welcome back to my channel my name is ildiko thank you so much for joining me today where i'm going to walk you through the astrology of may and i'm going to break it down to all 12 signs uh, after introducing the main aspect of the month for you. Mm. I always suggest uh, to watch this video primarily for your rising sign because this is the one that gives you the more precise prediction but secondarily you may also watch it for your sun sign uh, which especially if you were born during the day or watch it for your moon sign which is a more internal manifestation but it's especially is important if you were born during the night time so without further ado let's jump right into it so the majority of may sun is going to be still in the sign of taurus this is the season when we enjoy the flowers and the beauty and nature at least up here in the northern hemisphere and then on the 21st of may sun is going to move into gemini the Gemini season is coming up after that. Now, Venus on the second is going to move into Aries. And uh, that means that we kind of going to crave passion. And, uh, you know, we are going to be very active in our love life and prob probably social life as well. Now, on the 10th of May, however, Mercury is going to go retrograde in his own sign, in the sign of Gemini. Now, Bur Mercury being retrograde in his own sign will definitely cause all sorts of communication problems. Misunderstandings and gossips are highly likely, as well as difficulties in learning, processing information, transportation, etc. We are going to need to re- think, relearn, and rewrite uh, the ways we express our thoughts. Up until now, since uh, there were some mistakes done in the past, and now this is the time to make amends and fix those mistakes, uh, those issues. So we can move uh, with a more purposeful way, a more uh, a clearer way of communication, speaking, and liaising uh, with others after the retrograde period uh, will have finished. Uh, beside the communication problems, usually there are problems with regard to transportation, and travels and trips and so you want to make sure that before you go on a trip at least you know double check make sure that your car was serviced because all sorts of mishaps are happening during the mercury retrograde season when i remember when um, at one point when i didn't do that in a mercury retrograde season and we got stuck on the motorway and i thought we're never going to get home uh you know the car had to be towed home wow. Also, IT uh, devices can then can go funny, you know, so make sure you have backups for your computer, make sure that, you know, if you can postpone that, you know, that new device, um, buying that new device, because um, it's just... Um, you know, things can go wrong. Now, paperwork can be delayed, and that's true with regards to travel plans as well. So they could be delayed as well. And it's also highly suggested not to sign any paperwork during the Mercury retrograde season. But often the case is that they are so delayed that even if you wanted to, you may not be able to. Now, Mercury is going to go Kazemi on the 21st, and that's a very important day when uh, Mercury spends a couple of hours in the heart of the sun. And this is a very important time to receive or maybe ask for a message. And I'm going to tell you when I get to uh, all 12 signs uh, to your sign, when is it going to happen? But you need to convert it to your time zone. 
Now, after that, Mercury is going to move back to Taurus, and that is the sign of, you know, the material things, money, security. And so, um, you know, Mercury was retrograde in Taurus because, again, there were some issues with regards to, you know, finances. Uh, did you value the money you, you spend your money on? There's going to be some tough questions with regard to finances asked. Frivolous spenders, you know, may have a rude awakening. However, this is going to be the right opportunity to review your budget. And this time is, you know, could be inspirational to spend uh, on more sustainable ways in the future. Now, the next uh, big thing that is going to happen is going to be uh, Jupiter on the 11th. Jupiter is going to move into Aries. And so it looks like, uh, you know, Jupiter in Pisces season is over. And it's true, it's going to be over. Mainly it's going to be over. Jupiter is going to move back to, Air, uh, to Pisces um, towards the end of the year, maybe just for a short months. But yes, uh, the majority of the year, Jupiter now is going to leave Pisces for good. Now, Jupiter in Aries is not too bad, however, so we don't have to be too sad. <laughs> Jupiter in Aries uh, actually feels quite okay because Jupiter is also a fiery planet, rules a fire sign, Sagittarius, we know. And so Jupiter does actually quite well in fire signs, which is Aries. Now, for some of you who don't know, Jupiter is the planet of luck, abundance, and wisdom, and higher knowledge, long distance travel as well. And so primarily, it's obviously is going to favor everybody who, who was born um, in Aries, a zodiac sign, you know, Aries sun sign, but uh, it's going to be also good for Aries moon and Aries rising as well. Now, in the collective, it is going to um, be that humans are going to experience luck and growth and opportunity if only if they tune in to their leadership abilities, uh, their initiating abilities, their courageous and enthusiastic abilities. Yeah. All of us can do that. In fact, we are going to have to do that. Uh, you know, we're going to have to be more pioneering and we're going to be um, able to begin new exciting endeavors where bravery and le leadership is going to take precedence over waiting around and seeing what's going to happen. No, Aries is nothing about waiting around. Aries is actually, we know how impatient sign it is and how action-oriented sign it is. So if we take, you know, that Aries spirit a little bit, that means, you know, we are going to attract our fortune. Uh, so we need to lead, we need to initiate, inspire others and demonstrate enthusiasm and courage in order to take the most benefit that Jupiter is going to be able to give. So you have to have faith in yourself. And so for the whole season, as I usually do, I also give you a mantra. And this is uh, going to be this one for the whole entire year for everybody. I believe life is what I make of it. I believe life is what I make of it. And that's going to be your mantra whilst Jupiter is in Aries. Now, on the 16th of the month, we are going to have a total blood moon lunar eclipse. And that is going to be the strongest of all eclipses. We are in the eclipse season. When I'm making the video, I'm still waiting for uh, the solar eclipse in Taurus, which is going to happen uh, on the 30th of this month. And then so we know that each solar eclipse is followed by a lunar eclipse two weeks later, and that is going to be um, the the total blood moon lunar eclipse in Scorpio. And that's the one I'm going to talk about now because I'm talking about May astrology. If you want to know about the solar eclipse, it's still in my April video. You can scroll back down and watch it. So this solar eclipse, as I said, is going to be very, very strong, but obviously not everybody is affected. So again, what you need to do, you need to go um, find that link 
uh, cast your chart and see whether or not you have important points and planets on the 25th degree of Scorpio, Taurus, and perhaps also Leo and Aquarius, because these are the fixed signs and these are going to be the most affected by the eclipse. Give it, give or take, you know, three minute orb. So this is going to be a rather emotional lunar eclipse, you know, and it's going to put us into a somber and, you know, a little bit of painful mood as well. So lunar eclipses are usually the time of letting go. And so, uh, you know, we are going to come into some fated endings in terms of in matters of sexuality, intimacy, the hidden and, uh, you know, with regards to uh, other people's money, such as maybe investments or taxes, inheritances, you know, these sorts of things. Saturn is going to square both of the luminaries coming into a so-called T square configuration. And um, we don't usually like Saturnian squares, uh, especially not to the luminaries. They kind of very difficult, you know, they bring up difficulties, they bring up karmic lessons, you know, there's a lesson to be learned here. And so that is going to happen during this uh, full moon uh, lunar eclipse. And the Saturn square also will put us into another, will give us another sense of karma and fatedness, you know, when there is not much you can do. But it, at its best is going to put us into a dark mood where we feel like we are called out for some sort of past mistakes that we have done especially with regards to authority figures and this could put us into some sort of you know a bit of depressive mood as well the ruler of the lunar eclipse is going to be mars because uh, it's a scorpio eclipse and so the mars is going to be exactly on the same degree as um, the jupiter and neptune conjunction occurred on the 12th of April. If you haven't seen that video of mine, it is still not too late, please, I put a link up there, go back and check that video because it's very, very important in order to understand uh, how you have come to this moment. So uh, now Mars is touching the degree of um, Jupiter and Saturn square. So that is going to be uh, how interesting that this is actually happening on the day of this full moon blood moon total lunar eclipse that's going to give us a feeling of a fatedness however mars and neptune are conjoined uh, during this eclipse and this can give us this paranoid delusion and we are already in the somber mood because of that saturn and because of the stress of this lunar eclipse it is very important however that you don't lose your faith you know, you will feel the, uh, the confusion uh, in this solar eclipse energy. You know, you may feel as, uh, you know, you're wearing a blindfold and you don't know where you had it, what action you should be taking, you know, that you are going to lack sense of direction. Mm -hmm. uh, you feel that you, you need to surrender your control over what is unfolding. Now, if you are very scared easily, you need to take precautions, okay? Because this is extremely, extremely important that this is the time and you shouldn't lose your faith. Uh, you know, if you are self-confident and consider yourself self-aware, then this could be the time when you are taking your first action in order to reach that goal, uh, that dream that uh, you have you have created during that jupiter natural conjunction, so throughout the months of April, okay? Uh, it's very important that you don't fall into this fear and this delusion, this paranoia, you know, you have to consciously choose and leave a higher manifestation of this conjunction. And it's going to be difficult during this um, lunar eclipse because of, you know, the Saturn square, because of the, um, overall stress of the lunar eclipse so it's going to be not easy to keep your faith but you're going to have to do it you know uh you know you have to keep your enthusiasm to chase your dream under 
any circumstance. You have to keep on your enthusiasm to follow your spiritual goals. Now, maybe put your energy into charitable, um, charitable and human rights work as well. Maybe put your energy into healing the sick uh, because that can help as well but more entirely put your energy to keep on chasing that dream and and not to lose that faith that you have already uh, you know initiated uh, during the Jupiter and Neptune conjunction as I said for uh, for you to understand what I'm talking about you need to watch that video the Jupiter and Neptune conjunction uh, you know how to manifest your dream. Now, during the solar eclipse, uh, Chiron is and Venus are going to be conjoined as well. And that this will definitely suggest that uh, there's going to be some pain and healings in matters of heart or in matters of emotion and also in matters of money and value. Now, Chiron will not give you the magic magic heal that uh, to heal what's broken but it will show you how to love and and you know how to start loving for real uh, it may not be easy but it will worth it you need to face your pain because Chiron it will bring up everything now and that and um, also the lunar eclipse in Scorpio can bring up some long buried issues you know like lunar eclipse they usually reveal something to us so something uh, that you that it was long buried now it could come up you know the good the bad the ugly everything and you're gonna have to face it and you're gonna have to deal with it because these wounds they need to be healed but that's never an easy process right if you keep on ignoring your hurt um, that's not going to be an option okay because you know you need to directly confront your feelings even if it hurts um so your mantra actually for this um for the lunar eclipse it should be uh, you need to face it until you make it you need to face your negative emotions so it doesn't take control over your life eclipses are dramatic wild cards of our horoscope the, the universe uses eclipses as uh, tools to get us moving to show us that uh some of our lives became stagnant and there is high time to change. And these are usually um, areas that we are very reluctant to change or we don't even think about, uh, think about needing that, that there's going to be a great need for change. Uh, so because of that, uh, you know, eclipses, they come around, they approach us, they surprise us. Uh, they have this element of, uh, you know, you could, I never seen that coming not in a hundred million years and they get us moving they shake us out of our feeling of compliancy because we have reached a level of maturation where we need to step up to a different level to a higher level of maturation now eclipses they work very rapidly they want us to change and change during the eclipses are inevitable now, on the 30th of the month is going to be an amazing new moon in Gemini. And I mean, <laughs> I just love astrology that every month there is an amazing constellation in the sky. Like last month, it was the Jupiter and Neptune conjunction. And May, I think, if we survive <laughs> that lunar eclipse, which of course we will, uh, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be painful. But then we have got this beautiful new moon in Gemini to look forward to. Now, the new moon in Gemini is going to conjunct exactly the degree of, uh, of the fixed star Aldebaran. And that's a biggie and that's very fortunate guys and I'm going to talk about that when I get to each sign. Gemini, lots of retrospection and also great new beginnings for you especially towards the end of the month. So the beginning of the month up to the 20th 
the sun is, is still in your 12th house. And this is the house of being behind the scenes, you know, retreat, subconscious mind. It is also the house of addictions, you know, healing and uh, spirituality. So this is going to be still the time because you've already in that season since, um, you know, since the Taurus season. And this is the time for you to, you know, to retreat, to recharge your batteries, because situation have naturally outgrown of their usefulness, you know, and this is the end, you know, ending of a cycle period. So this could be very much part of the picture. Your energy is... Um, definitely largely and your focus is largely applied in uh, you know being behind the scenes you know resting recuperating your uh, you know private your personal and your private affairs so rest and recuperate reflect a lot of, of what has happened and you know prepare for the more outgoing time when the sun moves into your first house which is going to happen on the 21st now venus is also um moving into your 11th house on the 2nd of may so that's going to be the majority of the time and that means you know that you know you're I really enjoying harmonious and warm social friendships um, maybe group related activities within a club mm -hmm. you may meet someone through such group activities consequently your interests are, are going to be shared Venus here enlivens your friendship, your group associations with charm and lots of grace. So that's going to be a very enjoyable time for you. There could be romance coming from you know, from during this time as well for some of you, not for everybody. Personal charts are, you know, they are the key to answer that question properly. Uh, but uh, if you do so, then, you know, that relationship would be characterized with um, that association would be characterized by a strong feeling of camaraderie. So then Mercury, your ruler planet, is going to move uh, retrograde from the 12th, from, sorry, from the 10th of uh, May. And that's going to be a biggie for you since, you know, Mercury is your ruler planet is and is happening in your own sign. So that's going to be a big one for you. So when your ruler planet goes retrograde in your first house of self-image life path, no wonder that, uh, you know, you will have issues with your image, you know, your life path as well. So to say this is, a, you know, an old image or a work related problem could reoccur now or uh, could be a problem with regards to your home environment as well, because Mercury rules your fourth house too so there's going to be a time to reevaluate these sort of issues you know issues connected to your self-image your physical appearance you know the way you express yourself you know what sort of image how you talk to people how you express your uh, you know your thoughts uh, through communication to people so you need to rethink some of these issues uh, in this arena um, before you move freely ahead after the retrograde period now mercury is going to meet the sun on the 21st and that is going to happen uh, on the 21st and uh, that's the time that we call Mercury Kazemi and that's the time when the uh, Mercury goes in exact conjunction with the sun so to say um, um, you know meets sits in the uh, lap of, of the king or being in the heart of the sun and so Mercury is the messenger of the God so oftentimes during these times during these short couple of hours we can receive a message or maybe we can ask for guidance through you know a message a message system uh well not you know not your tax phone <laughs> It has to come from somewhere else, you know, maybe uh, you, you can meditate or it will, you know, the thought form and the message will find a way to you and you will feel it because you might even get the chills and you will know that message is for, uh, for you from the gods. Um, so that is going to happen between the hours of 4 p.m. To 11 p.m. during uh, during the 21st. Now I'm talking about GMT time, so please convert that time uh, time to your time zone. 
And then after that, Mercury is going to move back to your 12th house. And uh, that's the time when you become even more psychic you know you even more you can reconnect uh with your you, you know with your psyche and you know with the spiritual realm because this house is very much uh is a house of um uh, spirituality the subconscious mind you know other realms as well so you know you are you are needing some time to even more to retreat and and uh, uh, maybe rethink some issues you know uh, about yourself about your whole life path uh, so there's going to be a great need for that as well um and then uh, on the 11th of May, uh, is, Mercury is going to move out from Pisces, which uh, so far it was in your 10th house, and, uh, and is going to move into your 11th house. And that's just such a great time. 11th house is the luckiest house of all, with the luckiest plant of all. I mean, what can go wrong from here? I mean, unless you have some uh, very serious issues in the 11th house, but... Um, some astrologers say that the 11th house, even with the birth planet, uh, it can be successful and can be very fortunate. Uh, so that's the house of the blessings for sure. It's the house of, you know, groups and communities. So Jupiter is definitely going to expand and create growth in that area. You know, it could be that, you know, if you are not a very... Um, if you're not a, a very public person, then, you know, this is the time to become a little bit, bit more public. If you have a business that you are you needing to use uh, social media for it, that is the time to put yourself out there because you can reach masses of people with Jupiter being in your 11th house. I don't want to go uh, too deep into this issue because I have talked about that in my yearly video horoscopes. Uh, so if you would like to know more, then uh, you need to go back, scroll back down, find Gemini yearly horoscope. And then uh, there I talked about uh, Jupiter in, the, in your 11th house quite a bit. But it's generally, it's going to be a very fortunate time and it's going to last for a whole year. And then on the 16th is going to be the um, the total blood moon lunar eclipse, and that is going to happen in your sixth house, and that's the house of um, rest. Uh, sorry, not rest, but work. <laughs> it's the opposite of rest. Uh, it's uh, the house of work and hearth, sometimes the pets and service as well. So. Um, the lunar eclipse, we know that these are, you know, emotional times that's going to bring some confusion, some sort of culmination or even revelation, which I suspect is going to be quite, kind of negative because of the the, the Saturnian uh, T-square. And this is going to manifest uh, either in your health situation or in your work situation or uh, in terms of your service as well. Uh, so... This will stress the importance of hearth and the job atmosphere as well. So this could manifest in many, many ways. You know, there, uh, there could be, because it's a lunar eclipse, it could be that a female colleague, uh, you know, could be eclipsed out of your life. You know, that often happens. Um, and that colleague is not going to be a superior, but uh, rather an inferior to your position, or it could be your employee. Uh, but someone that you definitely meet on an everyday basis, you know, you are working with, uh, but that's just one manifestation. It could be that someone's true color uh, will be revealed to you, and that totally changes the, uh, you know, the dynamics in your work situation. Something could be revealed to you in terms of your health situation. And I have to warn you, because of the Chiron and Venus um, connection because of the strong heavy Saturnian connection as well uh, this is perhaps going to be rather negative and also a bit painful because where Chiron is there's always pain but just remember that you will always need to face uh, the pain first in order to be able to heal now Past negative situation with regards to work could culminate as well now. And, um, you know, 
those days around the eclipse should be stressful or could be stressful, but it all depends whether or not you have personal planets that are very close to the 25th degree of Scorpio, or perhaps the opposite, Taurus, or even to a lesser degree, uh, Aquarius and Leo, because these are the points that are you know, going to be strongly affected by the eclipse. So uh, there's a link down below. You can cast your chart there and you can see whether or not you have important points or important planets such as Sun, Moon, Venus, Mars, Mercury uh, around those degrees. And then you will feel it strongly. Now, again, don't forget, please, that um, the eclipse doesn't always happen on the day, but it doesn't mean it doesn't affect you, especially if you have personal points and planets there. The eclipse could be fed a few weeks before and six months after uh, the actual day. So that's why we say eclipse season. On the year when you have an eclipse happening close to your degrees, um, that basically it can happen anytime that year, okay? But uh, obviously, if you have something like that, and if you need any help, then you just need to book me in because these are quite complicated issues to work it out yourself if you, um, you know, if you haven't studied astrology. As I said, Mercury Kazemi, I talked about that uh, on the 21st between the 4th and the uh, 11th uh, hours of uh, the afternoon. And then Sun moves into Gemini, your, your, your first house. And that's going to be a bit, bit of a mixed baggage because, you know, your ruler planet's still in the retreat mode, um, you know, rethink, re-evaluation re mode. And, uh, but the Sun moves already into your... Um, first house and that uh, gives you a sort of rebirth you know uh, the sun illuminating your first house uh, for the next few weeks and it will bring issues with regards to your personal identity with regards to your appearance your self expression you know it will mark a height of uh, a new solar cycle and a new a new cycle of vitality as well and you are you're going to be in the position to make impression on others and to you know kind of assert yourself uh, assert your personal influence beyond its normal boundaries now the sun talks about you know being noticed you know shining your light uh being noticed without even having to do too much so you don't have to be loud <laughs> you're gonna get noticed anyway but personally, because your personal planet Mercury is still in the 12th house for a couple of, of um, a few more weeks, uh, you are kind of, you know, you're not showing everything though to people. <laughs> so spontaneity of expression, what is this uh, transit all about? And, you know, you are going to be ready uh, with this last evaluation with Mercury in your 12th house, you are going to uh, be ready to push the Put the past behind you and start a brand new solar cycle uh, which is going to last roughly a year you have a presence and you know you project confidence you know don't forget that the sun is uh, you know uh, ruling leo so you are taking up these leonian qualities who is you know very courageous very noticeable you know you have this increased energy and vitality and this is the time to take advantage of that you can get in touch with your true sense your identity and your purpose as well as i said the spotlight is definitely going to be on you you can shine you can express yourself you can you know draw the attention on your enterprise as well and uh, you can you can improve that general image that you have about yourself so you know it's actually a good time because in the meantime you're thinking quite a lot reevaluating and with that in mind uh, you know you are finding a new way to shine and a new way to uh, come across uh, to other people a new way of your 
image as well. And then finally, on the 30th of the month, moon is going to move into Gemini along with the sun. And that's, we call it the new moon. And the new moon is a, a beautiful thing. It happens once every month. However, every month, the new moon has got different energies. You know, it's in a different sign. It gets different aspect and uh, offers us a chance to you know, to rebirth something in one particular area of our life. And now this is happening in your first house. And that's again, you know, after all this re-evaluation that you have done in the past weeks, this offers you a, a new, a new, you know, a new, um, a new, a new chance to nearly rebirth yourself, you know, with regards to your self-appearance, with regards to your image, with regards to how you express yourself, and with regards to your whole life path, uh, your actions, because, you know, your first house talks about that as well. And that if that's not enough, I already told in the beginning of this video that this beautiful movement is very much supported by Jupiter and Mars as well, so that it will give you amazing amount of confidence. And so, um, and so also it conjuncts uh, the beautiful fixed star Aldebaran. And this fixed star has been thought eminently fortunate, portending riches and honors. And this is one of the fixed royal stars. And that's a biggie because, um, you know, the new moon, the sun and the moon, both, they align on the same degree, on the ninth degree of Gemini. And Aldebaran is also thought as, you know, Archangel Michael. He's one of the guardian angels. So, you know, the intention setting, which you should anyway do, but this is the time when you can, you know, you can make it big and you can, you can ask for protection. Well, you know, you can ask for anything really, because it is happening in your first house and that denotes whole of your life path. So, you know, Aldebaran, when uh, aligns with the sun and the moon, is just, you know, it's just so favorable for business, for honors, for credit, especially if it happens in the first house, and that is your case. So all of the signs, out of all of the signs, you are one of the luckiest on Gemini, so make it a good one. So with that said, I wish you all the best survive that eclipse season and then you are going to be uh, you know on your road with that uh, new moon in gemini thank you for listening hey don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and press the subscribe button for even more videos on astrology